I don't know. That's a problem. So what's up guys? It's Daniel in Houston from Arms Family Homestead and uh, another day, another rainstorm. Uh, so I messed up. I messed up pretty bad this time. Uh, Houston was supposed to go to golf camp today. He went yesterday. It was a two-day golf camp. It rained yesterday, and it quit in the evening. Houston and I went to the pond and went fishing, and before I left, DJ and I said, we need to move vehicles across the creek because if it rains again and overnight, the creek might get up. But we went bass fishing. We went to the pond come back about dark a little before dark totally completely forgot and then about three o'clock this morning it came a monsoon like big flood probably another three inches of rain get up this morning six o'clock leave about 6 30 houston's got to be at the bus to catch the bus to go to golf camp at 7 a.m it wasn't happening and we didn't have a vehicle on the other side so houston did not make it to golf camp today and that was all my fault um tracy came and picked all of us up and we went to crossfit and went and worked out and ran a few errands and stuff and came back home and uh the creek has gone down a lot but this morning it was rolling check this out well that's gonna be a problem So it has gone down substantially now, which that's what this creek does. It comes up and down. There's the hole where Houston's soft shell turtle uh, nest was, but the creek, the debris line is way up here. So the water was up to there and it has receded down to here. It's low enough now that I could get my pickup truck out. We, there's no way we could take Emily's Jeep or our Suburban out yet. Uh, the Suburban would be iffy. But when we can see concrete on that side, I know it's hard for you guys to see, but I've got a level of where I know it's safe to cross and not safe. But Houston and I have another problem. It, this, this might actually be worse than the flood itself. Yeah, because the flood waters will go down in a day. Yeah, but that won't go down in a day. No, we have a massive tree lodged on top of the dam hanging over into the swimming hole so uh, we brought a couple fishing poles with us brought a couple fishing poles to see if any sand bass are up in the creek i think it may still be moving a little bit too fast right now but you never know they'll come up with a flood and go back down pretty quick but we might get lucky we might. i bet i catch one yeah me too <laughs> Hey guys, today's video is sponsored by Helix Sleep. Helix has been a long time partner of our channel. So if you're not familiar with them, Helix sells premium mattresses customized to fit your specific needs shipped to your front door. So my family and I have been sleeping on Helix mattresses now for a couple of years. So here's one in that bedroom of the apartment. We've got another one in here. This is the Helix, Helix Dusk Lux in here. And I'm gonna remake the bed so I don't get in trouble. But Helix has over 20 options of mattresses to choose from. I think they're right, Earl. <laughs> you just follow me everywhere? And they take the tricks out of picking out which mattress works for you. Since you're buying them online and you're not testing them out in the store, they have their sleep quiz. So you just go online, enter all of your information into their website and take the sleep quiz. And it will come up and show you exactly which mattress will fit your needs, whether you're a back sleeper, side sleeper, whatever it is. So as I said, I'm personally a back sleeper, DJ's a side sleeper, and Helix, the quiz uh, showed that for us, the Midnight Lux was the best mattress for our needs. You're gonna get a 100 night sleep trial, free shipping in the US, and they stand by their products. Now when the mattress shows up at your door, I mean, it's so simple to set it up. You, it, like I said, shipped to your door, rolled up in a box. You open the box, cut it open, and the mattress just goes poof, right there. It inflates, and you're ready for a good night's sleep, huh, buddy? 
it worked out perfect adding these mattresses into our apartment here in our merch facility because we had the big tornado storm come through and all kinds of folks come down and stay the night. So don't, if you don't take my word for it and you don't believe Earl, listen to this guy. Okay, so no exaggeration. I got to go down to Salford and help Daniel out on the storm here about a month or so ago, and I got to stay in his new uh, merch shop that has an apartment in there. The very first thing I text Daniel, I said, this bed feels like I'm laying on a cloud. If I ever laid on a cloud, I think this is what it would feel like, and I slept like a little baby. I loved it. I love all of our Helix mattresses, and uh, man, I mean, just honestly, I think you would too. So if you're looking for a new mattress, be sure to check out Helix. You can uh, go to the link in the description box down below or go to helixsleep.com slash armsfamily. You'll get 20% off your mattress plus two free pillows. I'm telling you guys, this creek is just, the, the power of water is unreal. And uh, you guys saw just a couple days ago, it was a nice peaceful stream that was all clear and clean. And this morning, uh, you could barely see any of the dam at all. There was so much water going over. And you can tell by how that grass is all laid down. The water was way up there. So there's there's a lot more water comes down this creek when it floods than people give it, you know, credit. People don't realize how much water it carries. But that tree right there is going to be a problem. It's a very large oak tree. And... Uh, there's not a thing I can do with it today, for sure. Think there's any sand bass in there? I know there's a tree right in the way of where we'd want to fish. Yeah, I know that. Just cast over there towards those bubbles and see. Nope, not there. I meant to the right of the tree. get out there with a chainsaw on the dam and cut and let the top of it fall out it, it's just going to fall in the swimming hole but with as much rain as we've had lately a good flood would take it on down no doubt this part is going to be a problem so what I, I don't know I'm thinking just thinking out loud here but if I cut the tops off and we hope it is supposed to rain more tonight I don't know if it's going to drop I don't know if the water's going to drop enough. I don't know. I mean, I could, well, I could walk out on the dam right now. It, it should drop a little bit more, but if I can just get out there and cut the top out of it with a chainsaw, if we get another couple inches of rain, it'll wash that out. This side, the only thing I can really think of is maybe if I get the Cotto excavator and park it up on this berm and get several chains and reach out there and hook onto it and just kind of pull it over to the bank to the side of the creek that might uh might be a way to get it out of there i i don't want to leave that trunk there with that big root ball because there's such a mess there every time it rains and debris comes down it's going to pile up and then cause gravel and sand to build up and it'll fill in the creek right there i don't know that's a problem that tree hasn't been dead very long either. It was probably alive back before the storm when we had the tornado in uh, late April and probably fell over on the creek bank and now it washed into here. One that was hanging over the edge of the creek? Yeah. It finally fell in? Yeah, come here. It snapped 
있어. Well, did you see a snake go off in the water? There was, oh, there's a turtle right there. There was a pretty good brush pile right here. You guys have seen several times, well, for a couple of years, honestly. And uh, even back when Houston and I were ice fishing in the wintertime, yeah. there were two or three. It could be one of those trees. It's very possible. But that one that's in the creek right now over there, I think is one where this, where this tree's down, there was another one that had fallen just up yeah. from it a little ways. And you can see all the bark on the roots on the tree that's on the dam right now. And that means they've been exposed. Now they've been exposed to the air. So these trees that kind of hold the, the bank in, as those roots are exposed over time, it wash, you know, the dirt washes out around them, you get more actual like tree bark on the roots. So those roots have been exposed for a long time, kind of like that tree hanging out over right there. So it doesn't matter. It's yeah. a it's a tree in our swimming hole that's in the way, either way. Yeah, it is. Don't you go catch him. It's a plain belly water snake. Let's see if he'll uh, bite you. Oh, he's not going to bite your lure. Just go catch him. Cole would. Oh, just go catch him. Jay would. You scared him off. I was gonna catch him. No, you were. <laughs> They're not gonna be in those rocks right there where it's six inches deep. Hey, you know there's a big rock slab right there, so I would have cast over here where we know it's deeper. <laughs> that's what we should have done last night <laughs> before it rained we did not and the creek it's been several hours it's like 4 30 in the afternoon evening now so the creek has uh, gone down tremendously and we're able to get obviously the side by side across and my pickup and suburban so at least we're prepared for if it does rain more tonight it is supposed to rain Maybe a couple more inches tonight. Chance of hail and storms and possible tornadoes. You know, all the things. when you were a kid <laughs> and your parents said do as I say not as I do this is one of those moments I don't recommend this to anyone probably not the best idea but I, <laughs> but I think that tonight is our best chance to get rid of at least most of this tree out of our swimming hole we've got another chance of a couple inches of rain so might as well take advantage of an opportunity to use the flood water to wash it downstream so Run a chainsaw in my Crocs. Don't recommend it. So, uh, goes without saying, kids, don't try this at home.
nerve wracking usually. All right, so if we do get another flood, that won't have any problem washing down at all. I may, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I want to get that wet, but I may walk out there and cut that log right there. It's probably going to be waist deep or so. And uh, then that log can float on down with the flood. And then all I have to deal with is the stump. Well, y'all, <laughs> it's the next morning, and yes, it definitely rained. It rained a lot last night. I have not been down to check the creek, but I can hear it from the house. So that means it's up. And uh, I guess we had a pretty decent storm come through. I see several limbs down. Good morning, bear. Did you have a soggy night, buddy? Everything's wet and muddy and soggy, but I see uh, a big limb down in there. There's a couple limbs that fell in this pasture, but the, uh, you know, as soon as it gets daylight, the, uh, the goats clean all that mess up. I feel like I should have built a barn to put my equipment in, huh? <laughs> I got everything up here several days ago and washed it all and everything, and it's been a rainy, muddy, nasty mess, so I just didn't feel like tearing up the, the driveway with the tracks and everything, but there's another i don't know a couple more limbs down in the yard here i slept through all of this I, I heard it raining but i didn't know the wind was blowing that strong to knock limbs down everywhere so let's head down to the creek and see if that flood washed our tree problem out parked my wife's truck under the roof last night because we had a chance of hail and uh, it did not hail thankfully Guys just don't want to get your feet wet. Where's the second baby at, Mama? Okay, it's there. Mama Turkey and her two two babies. She's down to two babies, but they're big enough now they should survive. So I think she's able to raise two babies. Well, 
as you can see, the creek is back up this morning. Definitely up a little too high to cross. I'm sure it was higher. It's it's going down. It's uh it's really close to um crossable in an emergency situation, but it's it's too deep and moving too fast right now to cross. So the good news is though is we have vehicles on the other side of the creek. We did not get rained in. We can get out. We've got our got our walk bridge to get across and uh we're good to go today. We made a made a little better decision last night than we did the night before. So let's go uh let's go over by the dam and check and see if our tree washed out, see how much of our mess we got cleaned up last night. I know I know a lot of you are going to get on me for getting out there with a chainsaw and cutting that tree up when I could have used the excavator and chains and cables and all that and pulled it over to the bank safely and cut it up. But I knew we had that big storm coming. It was supposed to rain a lot. And the easiest way to get it completely out of my way is to just let the water take it. And uh, I feel like that was the best choice in the moment. So let's go see what we got. Well, the root ball's still there. And the main portion of the log is still there. However, the part that was in the swimming hole that was the biggest headache is gone. Somewhere between here, somewhere between here and the lake. So that's good. Now that portion of that log was jammed in there pretty good. When I cut it free yesterday, you could see the stump lean in and kind of push. And now that whole log is pushing against the dam. So I'm not going to get out there and mess with it today. After the creek gets back to normal, I'll probably do like I said before and bring the, the Cotto mini excavator down here and set it up on this bank and get some chains and reach out there and just bust that log loose should be pretty simple and then start working that root ball over here and probably what I'll do is end up just dragging it over here and rolling it off into uh, into that area right there I don't know we'll see but the main portion the headache is gone and I'm thankful for that so there you have it another headache dealt with <laughs> Listen, I, I know we live in a very unique situation and a lot of folks, a lot of friends even say, I don't, I don't, I can't even comprehend how you guys live across that creek and how you have to deal with that creek all the time. And listen, I'm not complaining about this creek crossing. This, this is the most beautiful place in the world to me. This is home. This is where I grew up. My dad bought this piece of property before I was born and put in that creek crossing and this this creek while it looks like chocolate milk right now is a very special place to me and there's there's nothing that i would change honestly people say we need to build a bridge that we can drive a car across and you're talking about a million dollar project I, we're not doing that but when i come in my driveway and i pull down in that creek you know I, on video i always try my best to when I'm leaving and coming back, I always pan across and show you guys the creek. And that creek, that waterfall, this swimming hole, all the stuff is home to me. And I know that sounds silly, but I know when I when I drive in and I cross that creek, it's like it's like I'm entering my my own sanctuary, my own personal mental sanctuary. It tells me I'm home. And I, I can't I can't even imagine living in a subdivision where houses are stacked right next to each other or in a city where you're in a eight story condo and I, I don't know. I enjoy going to the beach. I love the beach houses. I don't mind staying in a condo on the beach, but I couldn't live in that kind of life full time. I like my, I like my privacy and security and my own little sanctuary back here in the woods. And yes, sometimes the creek is a headache. Yes, I don't disagree. Yesterday, I was very disappointed in myself because Houston had to miss an event. Houston missed his golf camp, something that he's been looking forward to, something he's been making plans for. He loves golf. I'm not a golfer. 
but Houston loves golf. And I felt like I failed him yesterday, and I did. Because all it would have taken was for me to put a vehicle across the creek just like we have over there right now. And I forgot. In 14 years as a state trooper, I never once did that and got my patrol car jammed across and, and couldn't get out. I got close a couple times, but I never forgot because it was, I couldn't. It was important. And I failed Houston yesterday. And I'm sorry for that. That's my mistake. But it's part of living over here. It's part of, part of our life. And uh, like I said, I wouldn't change it for a second. I wouldn't change anything about it. I love it. It is... It is what it is, and uh, I don't know. I love my life, I love my family, and I love where we're at, and that's just who we are. So, anyways, that's going to wrap it up for me, guys. Remember, do something today to make somebody smile, because you never know, it just might change the world. So, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. You guys have a great day, and as always, we'll see you on the next video.